Hi, my name is Anastasia Jarrell, and my topic is Judith Murray's on the equality of sexes. First, I would like to start off saying that there is a handout that goes along with this video. It'd be beneficial for you to follow along with that handout. It is attached below. To start out, I would like to give you some more background information about Judith. She was born in 1751 in Massachusetts, United States. She was known as an early advocate for women's rights. She was coined as America's first feminist. She was actually a writer and she wrote poetry, plays, and was known as a letter writer. She wrote on the equality of sexes in two parts. Part one is intellectual inequality, where she talks about men and women on an intellectual plane, which is mental, and how that they should have been equal but they were not considered equal back in her time. Part two is gender inequality in the Bible and education. So first off, I would like to tell you what gender inequality is. Gender equality is rights given to men and women equally. But today and back then, we see more of gender inequality, which is not equal rights given to men and women. We can see that through education, the workplace, households, and sports. In part one, Judith Murray mentions that although the input of her and other women was not sought out or particularly valued at the time, she defined post-revolution America. Judith Murray considered herself a patriot and did not shy away from speaking her mind. She actually enjoyed putting her opinion out there that way others could follow along and hopefully she could influence men and other officials to feel the same way she did, which was that women were not equal or viewed as equal. Um, she quotes, Our souls are by nature equal to yours. The same breath of God animates, enlivens, and invigorates us, and that we are not fallen lower than yourselves. Murray points this out because she is saying, While men and women were not equals in their physical existence, no such distinction exists on a spiritual plane which is the God part of that. What did Judith Murray believe in? Judith Murray believed in rights to education, changes in government, and changes on a biblical level because men and women were considered unequal at the time. Judith Murray's views in support of women's intellect and equality show in almost all of her writings. This reveals her to be an of American, fem American feminism and a product of enlightenment in America. The point of her writing was to challenge men, to challenge government, and to challenge biblical bias. She talks about in part two of her In the Equality of Sexes about Adam and Eve. Judith believes that Eve was inquisitive and Adam was lustful. She even quotes that a laudable ambition fired her soul and thirst for knowledge, impelling the predictable so fatal in its consequences. This is where she argues that it's required a powerful source of Satan to deceive Eve in the original sin because she would not have been as easily swayed. But she's saying that Adam required no such manipulation and or deception to participate in their downfall. This backs up our point that women were more intellectually stronger, powerful, and willed to do things, so it took more persuasion from Satan or the serpent to convince Eve to do such an unspeakable sin. On the equality of sex as reveals the extent of her boldness, just because she challenges any biblical bias for the inferiority of women. Murray theorizes that Eve's fall resulted from her desire to adorn her mind, while Adam simply gave into his physical arousal at the sight of Eve's naked body. This suggests that not only does Murray see women as intellectual equals of men, but hints at the possible greater intelligence. The second part of her writing talks about education. She saw education as an out of marriage and an opportunity for economic success. She even mentions, in quotes, 
The females would become discreet, their judgments would be invigorative, and the partners for life being circumspectly chosen. An unhappy hymen would be then as rare as it is now in reverse. This essay, written following Murray's unhappy first marriage to John Stevens, reflects not only our hopes for improving the institution herself and other women's chances at being a way out of a marriage that is not appropriate or at the same level as she was, but it also speaks to her dissatisfaction with her own prior marriage, which is why she has a little bit of bias. Murray's resolve that women's education should be seen as means to improve not only the situ situation of married, married women, but of widows and unmarried. She wanted everybody to have their own chance at life outside of a husband. She was trying to show that women could do it all on their own. So in conclusion, gender bias is a real thing even today now in sports and education, work and household. We see it every day. Murray was one of the first women, was the first woman, to ever speak upon existence of feminism. And she set out with goals to challenge the bias of men, challenge the bias of the Bible even, even the government. She wanted people to believe in what she believed in, and thank God she did because today's, we obviously have rights. Although she didn't get to enjoy them in her time period, they did come shortly after and we are allowed to vote now, and we have a say in things. We can play sports that we want to, so as a woman, I'm very thankful for her to speaking her mind and believing in what she believed in and not standing down. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks.